Ah, sa Capoino. Cebu? Ah, unsa sa Cebu? Check up. <laughs> and, <laughs> then, and then, number two? Number two, swim with a sardines. Ah, sa? In Mualboal. Very good. The sardines of Mualboal on the west coast of Cebu Island in the Philippines. This is a very large accumulation of fish which constantly live just right off the coast of this scuba diving location. A few questions occur to us when observing this amazing spectacle. Why are they there? What brought them there? And what keeps them there? And also what species precisely of sardine is it? And are these even only sardines? So let's ask an expert. I'm here with my friend and mentor, Professor Ken Carpenter, Old Dominion University, who is a very one of the most knowledgeable people when it comes to marine fishes in the Philippines. So what's your impression about the sardines here in Morboire? Well, first off, it's a really interesting place to visit, and I highly recommend uh, people to come here to, to actually see this uh, so-called sardine run. But it, the, the name sardine run is actually a misnomer because uh, the sardines really aren't migrating at all. It's a resident population, so the, the sardines here live here. and. Uh, um, a run is typically also just a single species, and this particular school has more than one species. Uh, I observed at least three species of sardines in the school, and probably one or at least two species of jacks as well. So it's a, it's a resident school of semi-pelagics that have found refuge here. So it's more like a semi-pelagic refuge rather than a sardine run because there's many different species and um, they're probably attracted uh, to the fact that there's a plentiful food here. And so they, they probably first were attracted to the fact that there's probably some runoff from the local population. This uh, served as a sort of a, uh, of a uh, way of uh, allowing more phytoplankton to survive and more zooplankton to survive, so food for the fish. And then uh, probably the main reason why we have this resident population is just the fact that there is a school. So the school itself serves as a refuge because, as most people know, there's uh, safety in numbers. And so it's a, it's a positive social feedback. Exactly. So probably some, some individuals uh, have just decided to stay here because there's a good place for both food and also refuge as a form of a school. So it's like people coming to party to a certain place because it's known that there's a party. Yeah, and uh, they find out that the partying is a lot of fun so <laughs> and, a, and a nice uh, easy place to party so they just stay. So many semipelagics typically will spend most of their time far offshore um, and there are very few semipelagics that actually are residents on a coral reef. This is a near shore coral reef and uh, the fact that, that, that there is a resident population of sardines here is actually uh, unusual. Yeah, um, and, so and it's a very unique mm -hmm. place. So you said there were two species of checks and probably four of sardines. Probably four. I saw at least three species there but um, um, it's a good question. It's not a question of what species there are, it's how many species yeah. there are. And, and they can be distinguished by uh, dots on the uh, caudal, on the dorsal fin, as well as a, a nice you know, blue line. Blue line, blue line is yeah. very uh, common of sardinella species, um, but then there's another um, sardine down there that's more wide-bodied uh, without the blue line, and they have actually a, a dark, dusky spot above the opercle. So that's another species. Interesting. Um, yeah, but then the jack, uh, very, very different, uh, wider body than the sardines and has a very distinctive lateral line. The lateral line has a, a, a very no, uh, noticeable arch and then it goes down like that. And um, uh, so the, the jacks are very easy to see and for the most part they hang out in a, in a specific area with mostly jacks, but then there's many sardines that actually end up swimming together with them. So it's a, a multi-species school. 
uh, fish themselves don't uh, discriminate a lot about who they hang out with in the school so long as there is a school. But you do tend to see the jets hanging out in one part and then the other sardines in another part and you see certain sardines um, uh, in different uh, depth strata in the in the school in the aggregation it's a shoal or a multi-species and, and the, these there. checks are different from the checks which are hunting the school yeah yeah this is different from the jacks that are feeding on the sardines and also the other jacks as well so the sardines probably have come to the conclusion and through a lot of experience that being around humans actually helps in their safety. But then there are some uh, predators out there who actually take advantage of the fact that some of the sardines are more uh, relaxed around humans and probably also distracted by the humans. So some jacks and what we observed today was one, um, uh, one some jacks and some, um, uh, there was also a lizard fish down there. Uh, when we were swimming close to the reef and the sardines were also close to the reef, the lizard fish took advantage of the fact that there was some um, distraction there because of the humans. This is the lizard fish, which Ken just mentioned, which has just eaten a sardine. Unfortunately, I missed the actual predation event by a second. It's still struggling to get the fish down. The sardine was just a bit smaller than the actual lizard fish. If you look closely, you can see the scales of the devoured sardine next to the head of the lizard fish. These are such valuable and profound insights that they're worth reviewing one more time. First of all, this is not a sardine run, as it's often called. A run is a migration like the famous sardine run of Namibia, where the sardines migrate several hundred kilometers. This is a stationary aggregation. Second, these are not just sardines. There are at least three species of sardines present and at least two species of jackfish. So this is a multi-species aggregation. What are the reasons? Most likely runoff. Essentially, human waste products which serve as fertilizers. This is a fairly populated area, so you would expect that. Another reason is the aggregation. The aggregation is already there, and there's strength in numbers for this fish, so the aggregation causes more fish to join the aggregation. There is a positive social feedback. The, the aggregation is already there, and that attracts additional sardines and checkfish to come and join. Highly, highly interesting. There are more very interesting things going on in this multi-species fish aggregation in Moiboi. There's so much fish poop, and I've marked some of it with this red ellipsis, that it serves as fish food. There's even a scientific name for that. It's called coprophages. So if you carefully observe the school of sardines and jacks, you will see that the other fish in between, and these are mostly damselfish and some small wrasses, which feed on these feces pellets. The reason is that there is still some nutrition left in them. So here you see a damselfish, which is a consumer of sardine poop. I also want to say a few words about the tourism, which I think plays a vital role in preserving this accumulation of sardines and checks. The Philippines has a large population of often very poor people who like to eat fish. Without the tourism, I think these sardines and checks would have been fished out a long time ago. There are lots of dive shops and restaurants and hotels which to a good degree live off this accumulation of fishes. Now, I've got so much very cool, trippy, psychedelic footage of these animals doing their fascinating schooling behavior that I would like to show them to you. And I put some music on it, so 
just relax, chill, and take in the sardines and checks of more boy. Thank you.